This webinar is sponsored by Save the Frogs. We're America's first and only public charity dedicated to amphibian conservation. So I strongly urge you all to check out our website, savethefrogs.com, if you have not yet done so. We have lots of educational materials and other ways for people to get involved in saving the frogs. Um, yeah, it's a free webinar. All we ask in return, please tell everyone you know about Save the Frogs. Um, we need to get the word out about what we do and have as many people involved as possible. So with that, I'm going to change it over to Phil and uh, we'll switch to his screen. I'm in Santa Cruz, California. He's in um, New Southern New Zealand, I believe, at the moment. So here we go. Right, okay. Well, thanks very much for that introduction, Kerry. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen and everyone can hear me. Uh, and um, I'm here today to tell you all about the problem that we're facing at the moment with Archie's frogs and Hodgstetter's frogs. And as many of you might know already that these are have been declared as edge species by the Zoological Society of London. And we're a bit worried that the New Zealand government with their proposals that I'll outline shortly um, might push them over the edge and cause at least Archie's to become extinct and Hodgstetter's to become a little bit more endangered. Um, as Kerry was saying, I'm down in the southern end of New Zealand and I'll show you where that is in a minute as well. I've been working on frogs for probably 30 years and although I'm trained as a behavioral ecologist and I originally came to New Zealand to look at how the amphibians here communicate, my interest soon turned to conservation biology because the amphibians in New Zealand are so um, imminently threatened and we're now looking at trying to save the frogs rather than worrying about more pure scientific uh, problems. So the overview of today's uh, webinar is I'm going to be telling you a little about, bit about the amphibian extinction crisis which many of you will know about already. I'll introduce you to New Zealand and New Zealand special frogs. Then I'll talk about the Schedule 4 that some of you may have heard about and the mining issues that we're um, having to deal with in New Zealand. And then I'll tell you about how the mining can impact on frogs and also what you can do about it wherever you are in the world. So firstly, a little bit about the amphibian extinction crisis. And many of you will know that there is this extinction crisis going on. Uh, we have over 6,600 species of amphibians at the moment, and at least a third of which are threatened with extinction. And when you have a look at this pie chart over here, you can see that we've got a third over here that are um, either critically endangered, endangered, or vulnerable. We've got a bunch of frogs here, 6.1%, which are going to be moving soon unless we do something about it onto this endangered and vulnerable and critically endangered list. We've got 37%, you know, things like the cane toad and the coqui frog from Puerto Rico. Those are the ones that are least concerned, and uh, they're pretty safe. They're going to survive whatever happens. But the big gray area, and it really is a gray area, is this data deficient area here. And if we were to include those data deficient, because remember, when we talk about data deficient amphibians, it probably means that they're, they're close to one of these other categories. The reason why we don't have enough information about them to be able to say whether they're endangered or not is probably because there aren't enough of them anyway. So they really are um, what we would call as data deficient, and they might well be threatened. So if we were to think about that they are threatened as well, we could be looking at up to about 60% of all amphibian species are threatened with extinction. And many of you might think, well, you know, big deal. We all know that there's a biodiversity crisis going on as well. And it's quite likely that there are many other animals that we need to worry about that are also becoming extinct. But if we were to have a look at birds and mammals, and these are two groups that have been very well documented. Scientists have been interested in birds and mammals for a very long time. They know an awful lot about birds and mammals, and we know what species are out there. Only 12% of bird species and 23% of mammal species are threatened with extinction. So if you look at frogs where we could possibly have 60% of all the species threatened with extinction, that's quite different than when we look at other groups such as birds and mammals. And there's a quote here from Joe Mendelssohn, which is a really good one, because it's just telling us that although in the past we've been setting up national parks, we've been looking doing lots of normal things that we would do for conservation and protecting species, that's not enough to protect frogs. Frogs need a very special, um, a special arrangement in order to stop them from becoming extinct. Kevin Zippel, also the director of the Amphibian Arc, he 
um, in one of his talks, he said that addressing this amphibian extinction crisis is really one of the greatest species conservation challenges in the history of humanity. Frogs are becoming extinct because of humans, so it's quite rightly that humans should do something about it. And Kevin suggested that zoos take up the challenge, and a lot of zoos around the world and some zoos in New Zealand have taken up that challenge to try and stop this extinction crisis. This, by the way, is one of our beautiful endemic frogs of New Zealand. This is Hochstetter's frog, um, not normally this big, of course, but uh, a rather beautiful animal. <clears throat> so many of you might be thinking, well, why worry? And I think I'm probably preaching to the converted anyway, so we all know why we should worry. So I'm not going to dwell too long on this slide, but just a couple of things I want to remind you of as we go through this webinar, that amphibians are becoming increasingly valuable in medicine, and um, even um, the most cynical person out there can see the value of that to human health. So all, more and more we're finding information, particularly from frog secretions and frog skin, that help human health. Amphibians are very sensitive indicators of environmental health, and that's a really key issue to today's webinar. And obviously, the more important um, we value the environment, then you're going to see that amphibians are really good indicators of how well your environment is doing. If the amphibians are starting to disappear, then it means that some subtle effects are happening, and you are going to start destroying that environment. So they are really key indicators of a healthy environment, a nice clean green environment like we say we have in New Zealand. Amphibians also play key roles in the ecosystem. Uh, when I did my field work in Africa, everything liked to finish off their lunch with a nice after-dinner frog or something like that. They like the after-dinner mints of the jungle. Um, everything likes to eat frogs, and in turn, frogs tend to eat a lot of invertebrates. So they really are a keystone species in the ecosystem. And of course, in many countries throughout the world, frogs are cherished as agents of life and good luck, um, such as this, um, this emblem down here. And also in Puerto Rico, of course, many of you will know that the Koki frog in Puerto Rico is like a national icon. It's on their postcards. And it's a lot of good luck to have them inside your house. So there's lots of good reasons why we should worry about keeping amphibians around. So I'm sure that uh, those of you who are listening in who are in New Zealand, you probably know where New Zealand is, but a lot of people out there that I've met when I've been overseas think that New Zealand is somewhere up near Canada, so I just thought that it would be a really important thing here to have a New Zealand-centric view of the world, and you can see that New Zealand is over there, it's in the southwestern corner of the Pacific Ocean, nearest neighbor is Australia. I like to often say that New Zealand is a northern suburb of Antarctica, because um, on a couple of years ago, we actually watched some of these icebergs floating past New Zealand. So it was quite a nice place to be. The important thing to remember is that New Zealand is one of the fragments that um, was formed when the continent Gondwana broke up. So it's been isolated for 80 million years, and this has had very important consequences on the fauna of New Zealand, as we'll see a little bit later on. But one of the nice things, and Jared Diamond said this, is that when you study animals in New Zealand, it's the closest you can get to studying life on another planet. New Zealand is a new um, landmass. Well, it's been around for 80 million years, but humans have only been here for less than 800, 800 years. So it really is quite a new place to be. So if we zoom in on New Zealand and we have a look, and there may be some areas here, 